I did want to let her know that we are working with DEP to look at developing a sampling program. Um, DEP has been doing some sampling with that. Um, I know it's been a long time But um, Tom Pearson's group has been working with them cooperatively to develop a program for addressing the baseline um, and looking at a work from a work quality perspective. I have one more thing to add. Very important. So, um, thank you, Jim. And after, um, after we got all the data on the cyanobacteria bloom in, in 2012, after a rainy event, a twin rainy event on the San Jose River, DEP with Rick Copeland took it a step further. And he got money through some sort of mechanism, I think a, a river wash grant mechanism. <coughs> um, and now we have testing in wells in a 10 mile circumference of Coast Springs Park. And we participate to our home, uh, some of us in the audience participated that. My home water, my um, my, my uh, business water, and, and a lot of uh, well water gets into that sampling. So after we, we did the uh, six week or whatever sampling, we are now, I think, on our, well, since 2012, I think that started in 2013 or 14, so we're on several years of baseline sampling of our well water in our 10 mile radius which is another thing that will have to be established with this, with this idea baseline. We don't have a number of wells that already in place on our stream wells that we've been working on for the last few years that, that would we, kind of help capture that baseline. We have, um, I mean, we have enhanced our water quality monitoring network. <coughs> But I don't think, Tom can answer this clearly, but I don't think that E. coli specifically is one of the analytes or the one of the concerns that are analyzed for. That's correct. Yeah, we do not have E. coli in our groundwater or our surface water sampling on an ongoing basis, primarily because it's, you know, that falls under the purview of either DEP or DOH in terms of that kind of sampling. We have, as has been noted, assisted them during the course of a spill. DEP does do, I think as you mentioned, ongoing sampling on a monthly basis of uh, sucrose and E. coli, both I believe at, at what they call uh, trend stations. There are trend stations on the Wispacoochee River right at the state line at the County Road 145 bridge, as well as on the Alapaha River at the County Road 150 bridge right near Jennings, just inside the state of Florida, and at Yellowville where the, with the, where the Wispacoochee and the Swanee River <coughs> downstream of Alapaha has been for a long time that DEP has conducted those locations. In terms of the background, there's a there's a background of those parameters of those locations. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a big deal if they're out there testing anyway to add those two, would it? Just for a baseline for a while to see? Just let's just see if, if there's an issue in any of these wells. Um, it, I mean the, the problem with E. coli sampling in general is the whole time. It has to get to a lab within six hours of collection. And so that's, I mean, it's a, it's a logistical issue and there aren't many labs that do it as well. So the DEP has the lab in Tallahassee that does, that does that sampling, you know, the primary lab. So that's helpful in that regard to have that you know, already in place where the sample can be taken regardless of if it's, you know, Monday, you know, during the week or on, on weekends, potentially. Um, um, we have access to them, we, and that's, you know, I was just talking with Darlene about making sure that we bring them in house. They are in uh, what used to be the storage system from DEP, and they've converted that into the uh, watershed information network. We in um, just recently, so it's available to the public and to us. Do we know how far this this E. coli? Is? <coughs> if we're just testing to Dallas Park, why are we not checking it? Just to see how far, how far, how much is going into the guts. I'm out of security. All right, but after, after the, during the two, the, during the, the uh, I forget which which of the December events it was. There were two spills in December, but we sent our own staff out to get samples downstream of Dowling Park. Uh, we've done it just that one time. We took them at. Darlene's remember. <laughs> Forget where those locations were, but Darlene knows that yeah, she did. Yeah, uh, we took samples at Swanee River at Rock Bluff and Swanee River at Wilcox um, after that, the first spill event, the bigger spill event that happened um, to see, and it had shown dilution at that point. 
uh, of the river. So it was below. below. So at that point, it was below the standards of those locations because I wanted to see just that. You know, you know, you know how bad is it? In some ways, you know, is it below or above the standards? If we've never looked, then we couldn't say that we really knew. So in that, I wanted to be able to say we've looked at least in that one instance. And we'd continue to do that, you know, based on the magnitude of the, of the spill that would come up. Well, probably you could check with the FWC bi biology department. They check the uh, DEP data form, I'm sure it does the test. But at the mouth of the Swanee, uh, Eight Finney, Sea Nasty, they check all that. I mean, yeah, I'll probably I mean, find out that. I, I know you'll know that they're, you know, in the, in 10 or 15 years ago, there had been that issue with Shard Island, yeah. for example, yeah. on, on a long-term basis that no one could explain on the basis of any human interaction. Yeah. <coughs> that six-hour limit can be lost. Why is that? Um, it has to. Darlene, do you want to answer that question? Because <laughs> I'm a hydrologist, she's the water quality. Well, I could say something, but since she's here, I'm going to let her pick up. Yeah, so uh, the way that they measure E. coli in the lab is doing counts is what we're doing. So there's the Department of Health said that there's a presence-absence test. Um, sorry. There's a presence-absence test um, that they do, um, particularly for drinking water. Um, what we do is the actual counting. And so they have to culture it out. They have to actually take the live cells and do it. So there's a time limit for them to do it. They have to have done within 24 hours so they ask for it I think it's 24 24 or 48 hours and they ask for it within six hours of collection um, just to be able to do the process of things the standard procedure done for that particular you know, There are studies, I haven't looked at it, but when it's in the ground, it does, they do die off. And where they're, um, but I don't have that time limit that it takes to die off after being in the ground. But if it does happen, it does die off at a person. They're not getting what they need to survive. Can I clarify something? In December, Valdosta had not just two spills. Those are the ones they told the public about, the big ones at the Withacoochee Wastewater Treatment Plant, excuse me, the, the Mayor John Gill plant. But they had two dozen other spills at other locations. The location I mentioned at Wainwright Drive that goes straight into One Mile Branch, goes into Sugar Creek, goes into the Withacoochee. It's a more direct path to the river than from the wastewater treatment plant. So just want to clarify, it wasn't just two. <coughs>